This time on Paddle Box, we're building turrets and top mounts because these zip ties will not hold us on a track. Yep, and we're doing something really radical. We're actually designing something before we start making it. Literally, yeah. zero parts of this car so far have actually been designed and everything has been figured out as we go along. It's a bad idea. <laughs> When we built the suspension last time, we were sort of cobbling it together with some miscellaneous washers. Now, we've got our misalignment washers in, and they actually are, give us all the range of movement we need on our suspension, which is great. We spent quite a while looking at the top mounts and the Mark II and Mark III Golf that these are originally meant to fit, and they have this massive rubber bush that sits on the top, and then this cup that jams between the two and holds it into the chassis. Which is lovely, if it weren't for the fact that we don't have a two or three hundred ton press to make the press fit piece that this would have to fit into. So that's out. We found this, which is from a 2004 Forrester rear suspension strut that closely matches the top of our suspension. It's not an exact fit, but with a bit of padding from some rubber in order to stop it rattling, we should be okay. Why a Forrester? Well, a friend of ours was fixing her suspension here, and while we were scrapping these, we noticed that the bowl closely matched the top of here. So all we're really aiming to do here is try and simplify the suspension a little bit. The coilover as built for a Golf actually does a bunch of jobs on this one little thread at the top. It's got one nut that keeps this bushing in contact with this top hat that holds the spring compressed, so that keeps the whole stack together. There's then another set of parts that goes on the top that holds it onto the body. What we're trying to do is simplify that a little by taking some of the jobs away from this thread. It'll make it a lot easier to take on and off the car. So we're going to put this mounting plate on the top and it's going to replace this bush in the middle here with one that still covers over the thread but also fills out this centre bore a little and that's going to locate this on the top of the suspension strut. What we're then going to do is bolt through this plate onto another plate that we're going to make up that attaches onto the body. And what we'll have then is a single thread here that only holds the coil spring compressed on the strut and we'll have three bolts that actually go into the body so that this whole, this whole thing drops out in one single piece from the body without having to decompress a spring or you know kind of try and anchor it on this little pinch point here or anything like that. It'll be a lot simpler to remove. So just bolt, 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 drop the whole strut down as is, and that'll make our lives an awful lot simpler. So here it is. This is the first thing that we've cadded on the computer and actually are making as is. We've done a bit of work with Racing Aspirations, designing the rear suspension geometry, but because it can't do a full multi-link 3D simulation, that was kind of more of a sanity check, making sure that the upper and lower radius arm lengths gave us behavior that we wanted. This is a little bit different because this is actually coming out of the computer, getting printed, getting made, as we made it in CAD. So it's kind of a big moment and it's definitely something that we should have been doing earlier on in the build, rather than just kind of freewheeling everything as we have been. We've taken one of the top of our turrets and attached it onto the strut so that we can position it relative to the body. In order to work out how high we need the top of the turret to be, we need to extend the suspension as far as we're expecting it to go, so that at full extension of the spring, it will be at the bottom of its travel, or thereabouts. In order to do that, we need to take the bottom bolt out of our suspension because there's a little bit of binding there that we need to fix when we rebuild the bottom. So we've taken the coilovers apart, just taken the springs off them, and the idea is we're going to try and figure out how much travel we have on the shock absorber here. So if I let that go, that's going to continue rolling up for about five and a half inches, which is about our suspension travel. There was originally a bump stop in here, which ate another inch and a half or so out of that. But since we've got a bump stop on what was our coil spring mount here that we're going to put a little plate on the bottom of the chassis, we can actually lose the bump stop in the coilover and use the one on this. We get all of the travel out of the shocks. So we've got five and a half inches or so of travel there. So what we need to do to set the top mount position is recompress this back down, fully compressed. We've got the wheel, or the hub rather, sitting at full compression right now. So this is about as high up as it's ever going to come. We've got a little bit more room in there, but we're giving ourselves a little bit of tolerance squash the strut back down, put our top mount on it, and then we can basically set wherever that ends up sitting to the body, and that gives us our fully compressed setup for the strut. We've compressed our suspension strut here, so this is it fully, fully squashed down under the absolute maximum conditions we could ever put it under. It's probably never gonna get to this. We've put a nice big chunky section of flat bar in the back here, and all this is here for is just to make sure that the inside face of the turret top and the outside face of the chassis leg are vertical to one another. So when we start shaping up the plate that's gonna fill in this face here, we know that it's actually vertical rather than we've accidentally you know, taken measurements in or outwards, which would kinda suck. So what we can do now is we can start measuring from the front and rear corners of the turret top here down onto the chassis leg and just generally figure out the shape that we want that plate to be. Once that's in, we can then do our big triangular reinforcements onto the front and rear of the turret and that will be pretty much a complete suspension turret. So we can start welding and put it on the ground then. 
So a suspension turret is nominally three parts. You've got an inside, a front, and a rear to it. Now we worked into the, into the night a little bit last night and got the inside face sorted, so that's what you're seeing here. This face along the top is where the uh, turret tops are going to weld onto. So we're going to be able to bolt the top of the strut into those and that will all be part of our big turret box here. So we've got, still got to put gussets onto this to support it now. So we've got to have the rear and front faces of the turret itself to enclose the suspension coil over. And then on the inside here, we're also going to put some more gussets just to add a bit more lateral strength, just to be on the safe side. In the A3 that we're pulling a lot of this whole rear end out of, um, these would be the front suspension turrets. And in there, they're actually boxed in really, really well. Right behind them, they're backed up against the bulkhead, back into the, uh, into the passenger cell. Quite close underneath them is the main chassis leg for loads and loads of strength there. And also on uh, just here, there would be the inner wing structure. So there's a whole lot of strength around here. Now, obviously, we haven't really got that, so we're going to try and replicate it as best as we can, because I figure if Audi deem that stuff necessary, we probably ought to as well. Now we've got the braces into the back of our turret, down onto the chassis leg, we can start locating the top and working on the gussets that are going to close in the whole turret itself. So we've got one of our top pieces here that we've welded on very quickly in this case, a strip around the front to give it a good bit of rigidity and something for the front and rear gussets to tie into. The gusset itself is going to have to have a bend in it because it needs to be in this plane with the outside edge of the turret and it needs to meet up with this. So this one here, you can see, goes around the back, fits in nicely and encloses the back of the turret like so. The front one's going to need to do something very similar but it's going to need a little bit more tweaking but we need to get this mounted, this mounted and then we can bend and tweak a few bits around and see where we get to. Now this might look a lot like just a bunch of big dumb flat sheets of metal that we cut out of sheet and welded together and that's because it's exactly what this is. There's really not a lot of very complicated going on here. Um, this whole structure around here is basically just a strip that we welded on around there, a big triangle down the front, a big triangle there and a lot of other big triangles in other places. It's all really, really simple stuff. So didn't really feel like boring you with all the video of that. Also, it was super late and super dark. So here we are, ready to prime and, uh, and get a bit more work done. There is something that's been playing on my mind for a few days since we finally located the top of our turrets. They are very low down compared to where we were playing around with before. This unfortunately means that the top of the turret looks very close to the top of the tyre and the inside edge of the tyre. Now we've got one of the widest 5x100 fit wheels we have at the house, which is a 225 off an Audi TT. And I can tell you that it's not good. The inside edge of the tyre rubs and catches pretty hard onto the skirt from the top of the turret. Now we can solve this in one of three different ways. We can bump the wheel out with a spacer, which isn't the end of the world, and we can fix it with different wheels later with a different offset, so that's not really a problem. We can cut a good chunk of material out from the bottom of here, leaving probably at least half an inch to three quarters of an inch of skirt around the very outside edge without doing too much damage. And we can also look at running the suspension a little bit lower down, because having done a couple of quick measurements, it is sitting very low under full compression. So we can play with our bump stop spacing and see how far we really need it to come down before we have problems. Before we can fit the wheel on proper and test exactly how bad it is, we need to rebuild all of our suspension. So we have all of our joints and half nuts, so we can actually put the suspension together on both sides properly, ready for putting this onto the ground, which might happen later depending on how bad this is. It turns out it's worse than that. We've got another problem much larger than the fact that the wheel doesn't quite fit under here. And it's a problem we've created ourselves with two separate design changes that we've made to existing plans going, it'll be fine. One of the changes we made was this rear arm is now straight. We were always gonna have it bending around so it cleared the coilover. And we did some measuring and we did some checks again when we were mounting these to make sure that everything fit. If this was probably half an inch further back, we would be fine. Everything would clear, this would operate, this would move past, and it would be spot on. As it happens, the back edge of this just clips the front of our tower. We've got this wound out all the way and leaning as far back as possible, and it cannot go further forward because the spring is touching the back of here. So we've been sitting scratching our heads for a while, trying to figure out how to solve these problems as efficiently as we can without having to redesign and remanufacture too many things. 
the basic idea we've got is if we put on a camber adjustable top mount, that might solve a few of our problems. So we're just going to take the non-adjustable Forester top mount out of here, which involves dropping the coil over out, take the top mount off, and that should let us put the top of the coil over wherever we want it. And we figure if we put it fully in and fully back with the wheel on, if that buys us enough space, everything's good. Now we've got a wheel in place, like we probably should have done when we were designing these, we can see where the new pinch points are. Now the back of this turret here is pinching up against the coil here. You can see we've taken a little bit of paint off while we've been waggling it around. It's still not as far over as we need it to be to avoid hitting this, which is a problem, and it's still not quite as far back as we need it to avoid it hitting the suspension, which is still a problem. So the back of the turret is going to be the sacrificial lamb here. We're going to take this triangle out at the bottom to see how far we can move it across. And if we have to, we're going to take all the way down here out and just rebuild a new back of the turret all the way around. It's not quite going to be as pretty as it once was, but it's going to work and that's what matters. We've completed the post-mortem and the results aren't good, at least not for our competency and they point very much to user error when coming to a tape measure. This strut sits quite happily where it is. We put a spacer on and we still rub on the inside of the tire. But where it's sitting here seems to be exactly where it wants to hold up. And we think we've taken this measurement and this position as being correct when it's really not. And as a result of taking that as our center line, we've decided that this distance needed to be 80 mil. We can't think of any other reason why we would have done that. But if you put the top mount back on here, and fit it in, you can clearly see that there is quite a wide gap and that's nearly an inch across. If we didn't have that in, this wouldn't rub, this would sit a little bit further over inside and we'd even have a little bit more room against our suspension arm, but more on that in a second. Unfortunately, the easiest, simplest, although highly destructive way to fix this is to take these seams out with the grinder, these seams out, this down and remove about 20 mil from the inside edge of here. It's not a good day, but at least we have a solution which isn't as destructive as it could be. Been a bit of a sad and cold morning this morning, cutting off the top mounts, undoing a lot of work. I don't think we've ever gone so far back into a project within the same episode. It's, it's a bit sad. But you can still hear, just about, squeaky squeaky tyre on spring. So we've cut off about 20 mil or so from the back of here, and now we can put this back on the top, relocate it in, and see how it is with the coil slanted a little bit further inboard than we had it before. So we just put a couple of turns on there, we can move this in onto its new home, at least in line that way, and we get rid of all of our squeak. So it's still sitting a little bit too far back, and that's because it's touching the radius arm down there. So we just need to move the bracket forwards, and then we get rid of that problem, and we can put these back in, tidy it all up, and it won't quite look like garbage that it does now. Now we've got everything back together and it's good news. We've jacked the tyre up to about resting height so we're taking the weight of the engine through the suspension. It's not just kind of sitting and hanging now. And we found the tyre doesn't hit the coilover anymore. It's real, real close, but it's not hitting. The coilover isn't hitting our suspension rod, so we're all good there. The only thing we've got to worry about now is we're going to punch the tyre out a little bit more. We're going to throw a spacer in or get some higher offset wheels just to give us a bit more clearance. And we've also got to sort out the tyre hitting the turret under heavy compression. Where we've had to cut it apart and re-weld the turrets back together, it's all a bit of a mess. So we're going to sand this all down, prime it up, get it all looking pretty. We're then going to weld on all of our suspension hookups for real because currently they're only tacked in place and frankly I'm amazed none of them have broken off yet. With that done, we should finally be able to hopefully get this thing on the deck. <laughs>